All right. Hello. All right. Everything Hello good? there. Hello. Hello. Welcome to episode three of the Fracture Glass podcast. And this time uh, we have with us a special guest, his first appearance, Nobby Slicks. Say hey, Nobby. Hello. All right. So let's do a sound off. We have Alpha, Hello. Uh, Harrington, Hello. and Nomad for this episode. Howdy. And this episode's going to be a little bit shorter than the other ones because I want to go play Dead Space. But um, we're going to be focusing uh, mostly on uh, Navi's projects. Yes. And so, uh, we've... Sorry, go ahead. Uh, whichever uh, one you want to start with, either any of the projects you want to start talking about first, just uh, start talking. Um, uh, today I just want to mostly focus on Reach because that's the one I've... That's the one obviously we've gotten furthest into in terms of planning um etc etc just uh um so where to begin um where, where should i begin anyone <coughs> well probably no. with normal reach and then going with how what, what you're doing here differs yeah okay yeah. Well, story generally okay unlike other projects in the timeline this isn't so much a rewrite as it is a Think of it more as a novelization with minor changes here and there. Retelling. Um, a retelling, yeah, a retelling. Um, so, I think I think definitely the biggest difference is with Noble Six herself being um, a f Noble Six in this this time as a female, um, and she's a medic as well, which. Um, not, not so much the super secret only hyper lethal vector that she is in, or rather he is in, um, in the core canon. Um, other differences, of course, being uh, uh, no noble team themselves are no sorry, noble team themselves are di aren't particularly different from how they are in the main in the core canon. Mm -hmm. um, designs, des design wise, they're all the same. Personality wise, they're also all the same. Um, aside from the fact that this time we have the inclusion of Resenda A344, who, while she's not particularly involved in the main story, she, she, she'll make appearances here and there. Um, furthermore, there'll be sections from the perspective of the Covenant, particularly the Field Marshal, who we've yet to name. Um, we need to actually do that, but, um, yeah, the Field Marshal... Um... If you don't mind me hijacking for a moment here. Um, back on the note of Resenda, she's not an original character, is she? Uh, yeah. No, she's not. She was uh, cut from Reach. Um, obviously, her role was meant to be a counterinsurgent in place of a meal because of, uh, obviously, his uh, deep-seated hatred towards the insurrectionists. Um, a bit but, off um, um, may I add real quick, it's a little odd how at the start of Reach they sent him along with Noble Team when they thought they were going up against Insurgents at the time. I'm not sure if they decided to retcon that, to be honest. Because, like, I don't know. You make a fair point. It doesn't make much sense, does it? No, it doesn't. No. No, I'm pretty that sure maybe, that lore um... was from his Bungie.net like, thing, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. I will return in a moment. It is. It was. Um, one thing I will say... Oh, the nubby is AFK. Um, one thing I will say is... It makes more sense to me that Colonel Holland probably has a hell of a lot more faith in Emil than Oni does. I mean, sure, but it, it is still... Like, if the man's basically on a watch, with, watch, yeah, watch list from interacting with insurrectionists, you'd think, like... They would have just made him a headhunter or something instead. I mean, he has a lot more of the qualities a headhunter would have, doesn't he? Indeed, I suppose. I suppose it's, um... I'm not sure. Yeah. It's a matter of deciding what is and isn't canon. And of course, with fractured glass, 
It's a bit of a headache in any case. Yeah, just trying to... Nobby is obviously the head honcho as to who is who and does what in the Reach rewrite. Yeah. Since it's his project. Sorry, retelling, not rewrite. Sure, yeah, things retail. are changing, but it's definitely still Reach. Yeah, exactly. It's not like, uh, what is it, like Blue Team Reforged, the Halo 4 rewrite where there's some fairly drastic changes that alter events pretty considerably. Yeah, well... It would change I mean, the events for the future entirely. Indeed. Well, I think a big change, and Nobby's gonna... We'll ask Nobby a little bit more about it, is a couple more member... I'm sorry, one more member um, does get off of reach. I believe... We already know June's gonna survive, but Rosenda is also going to survive as well. Indeed. And... I have returned. Welcome yes, back, Nami. Um, Rosenda is going to survive. Um, she, her stepping off point will be around, um, round about New, I'd say after Exodus, before New Alexandria. And um, when you say that, like, what, what exactly is she going to be doing to explain her absence to the rest of the, the retelling? Um, so, you know how in the game, the, uh, the core focus of the mission is around that, um, is around the, the well, the final act of the mission, the core focus is around that Oni Tower. Yes, I remember, yes. Um, basically, if in in this story, Colonel Ackerson is stationed there for a while, mm -hmm. and he basically calls, he has Rosenda called in to escort him to um, wherever it was he, he tested John's Mark V armor. Obviously, in this case, John doesn't actually meet Rosenda. She's elsewhere on the base, but, um... Right. It also helps solve a plot hole of how Ackerson got off of Reach. I suppose that's not so much a plot hole as much as it is just an open-ended question. Yeah. No. no, that's right. That ain't a plot hole. Not everything's got to get elaborated on in painful detail like that. Yeah. Some stuff we can... Some stuff can be left to... A little bit of interpretation, just adding a couple extra temp poles, as it were. Yeah. So then, um, one thing I just want to, I kind of want to ask you too, Nobby, is how much of, I guess, you, how much of the game is going to be like, the game's event's going to, I guess, be, could they possibly be fleshed into some of what, has ha what happens in the novel, or like, how are you going to answer some of that? Well, the Fall of Reach novel has virtually nothing to do with the game. Right. Um, Harrington can confirm this for me. This is true. Um, it's very different. But, like... So, don't expect to see characters like... Don't expect to see any Spartan 2s aside from George. Um, yeah, no, this is very much a rewrite of Halo Reach the game, not Halo not the Fall of, the Fall of Reach. Reach. Yeah. Which cool. if it was the rewrite and the fall of Reach uh, would take forever. No, so, we yeah. and also it's patently unnecessary. Yeah, I think I think with uh, the th the first wasn't fall of Reach already rewritten anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, no, it was edited. A well, rewrite implies considerably major changes. A good example is how like um, what is it? Original Fall of Reach, if I recall correctly, came out before Halo Combat Evolved. It was, that is true. like, um, the first thing Halo-related that released. I think it was a, a month before. Indeed. Um, and one of the things that gets, um, that is noted is that apparently, um, elites make their first debut in the whole war at the Battle of yeah. Reach at the very end. Yeah, that was weird. And obviously... That makes no fucking sense. Oh um, yeah, I mean, as early as Halo Wars, like, contradicts that. Yeah, uh, real yeah. quick as well, you are correct, the originally published, Halo, Halo Fall of Reach originally published October 30th, 2001, and November 15th, CE was released of the same year. But, um, yeah, but kind of back to it, um, so in terms of like the main events of the game, not much really changes. Um, 
at some point we considered having six no, noble six survive um but then that would warrant a, that would you tend to war oh, sorry that would tend to warrant a combo of old rewrite and we generally just don't want to rewrite the main trilogy no yeah there was i remember there was originally a partial thought about it but no the original trilogy is more or less going to stay the as it same. is there may be like a couple like maybe like a, a side story set during the the side trilogy but there will be there's going to hopefully be no rewrites to any of those the, the stories are good in themselves to stand on their own and still be part of fgt yeah uh, I, originally, uh, I remember when you we were first planning the things, one of the ideas was having Kelly being in the pod in CE on the Pillar of Autumn. Yeah. And, and we were like, we were just like discussing, like, oh, what if she wasn't as injured so she would participate in CE? Yeah. Like, then that would change so much things. Wait, did yeah, you say Kelly? Would... Yeah. yeah. Kelly, it's. Uh, I thought it was Linda, Linda who got uh, stabbed. No, yeah, that, that's. Yeah, Linda was in the pod, but early, early on when we were first forming. Uh, the timeline project one of the first story ideas that was put forward was you know switching two units switch oh, okay. to Spartans essentially yeah um, um, eventually that was kind of that was just kind of put aside as that that's a good idea but again that's a huge rewrite of not just CE but potentially I mean freaking first, first strike right off the bat there on the flood yeah. Well, technically, the flood is just CE. Yeah. The flood is CE, but more fleshed out in terms of uh, story. So, yeah. Most likely a flood, but yeah. Um, I would say the only thing I, I've been thinking about the if you ever touch the trilogy, I think we could do some sort of like audio logs that don't change too much, or just like inner thoughts of what the characters are thinking do, during the scene. If if we, I think if we're going to do the trilogy, we do what happens between missions. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that. That's a good example of that, I think, is probably after Floodgate in Halo 3. There is like a... I can't even remember how long of a time period it is. It's like a week or two weeks or something. Two weeks, I think. Where they're just riding on the Shadow of Intent and the Covenant ships uh, to the Ark. Yeah. And I find it kind of remarkable that that was in 2007 and we still haven't like heard like fuck all about any of that. Yeah, the thing about like say I say like the, if we were to rewrite rewrite one game, I would say doing Halo Three to make it more consistent to Halo Two, like especially characterizations with uh, Miranda Keys and the Prophet of Truth. That's probably the only. What big about thing uh, I'd really What about Fell uh, since he got like reduced to being a sidekick basically? Yeah, technically Fell as well, giving him a pr more prominent role in the Which... story. Which just reminds me, actually, um, Thel will also make an appearance in the Reach. In Reach. In, um, in what way? I wonder. He's not going to be. Uh, nope. He's not going to be on the ground at any point in the story. He's going to be. There's going to be some bits where after uh, the the three fleets arrive at Reach. It's, there was three fleets, wasn't it? No. It was. It was a ton of ships. Um, yeah. You discuss, and I'll see. After the after the ships arrive, there'll be some cutaway bits to Thel on the bridge. He'll be um, look, he'll be like sort of mourning the death of uh, Roba Rutami, who'll obviously have died like just prior. Um, that was um, the guy he was the, that ship, got... he was the ship master of the Long Night of Solace. Oh, the one that got a uh, hyperdrive somewhere else. Yeah, the the one that got like shorn in half. Yeah. Sayonara, um, gentlemen. Um, um, and then sorry. there'll be like some, there'll, then there'll be like some bits where he contacts the field marshal and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, he won't be. Um, so yeah, he won't he won't be on the ground doing any fighting. Yeah, it was about three fleets worth of Covenant ships. Uh, okay. The fleet of particular justice... It did take quite a lot of stuff of to take down Rage. And the 
fleet of righteous vigilance. Yeah, didn't the Covenant lose like thousands in the uh, invasion? No, it was, it, but it was a lot. It was yeah. like a high hundred. Even on um, August 30th, on the final day of the um, of the effective fighting, uh, which is like the big space battle you see at the end of the Fall of Reach in the book, um, that I think at minimum 300 Covenant ships go down in that. I didn't mean ships, I just meant, like, overall, like, troops. Oh, and just troops? Yeah, it's, it was pretty disastrous massive. on the ground. Um, it does, so I have Halopedia up, and it, for the Covenant site, it doesn't give an exact count, just because even before the war, there were just, what, anywhere from 10 to 20 times more Covenant uh, forces than there were civilians in the UNSC, so it just says... Heavy terrestrial and exo-atmospheric losses, the majority of the fleet of Valiant Prudence, as well as over 210 ships. Wow. Um, if you're curious, the UNSC, of course, it's marked as catastrophic. Anywhere from 650 million to a well over a billion casualties, 130 ships destroyed, or lost rather, sorry, 20 orbital defense platforms destroyed, all refit repair stations, the majority of ground forces, and a, this, an unknown number of Spartan 2s and at least 17 Spartan 3s. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a... It was Quite a, a lot. Fight. Yeah. Yeah, so so how was... no, not really, but uh, is there, uh, what's the plan after uh, Downfall? Um, after Downfall, hmm, there's a few stories planned, particularly a, um, a, re a complete rewrite of Glasslands, particularly the Onyx sections. Um, we're not really going to cover Kilo 5 all that much um, we, we might do it at a later date but we want, we want to focus on the Onyx sections because um, we, we they need we... to be changed the most <laughs> yeah so then, um, can you kind of go into a little bit more detail as well Like, I know for one you're going to be uh, redoing just Lucy's character overall because well, you've made your thoughts well more than well known online regarding her handling by Karen Travis, I think the author was. Karen Travis, yes. Or yeah. rather, lack of handling, shall we say? Um, I've got nothing kind to say, so I'll say nothing kind. First things first. Um, she's staying mute. She she won't be speaking again. Um, in the story. Or, or likely any others. We we have no plans to change her status. We have no plans to sort of retcon her being mute. Yeah. Which is a, the poorest decision 3 of 3 has ever done is making her speak. That wasn't yeah. really 3 of 3, that was Karen Travis. No, that was yeah. just Karen Travis. And 3 of 4 yeah. has made a lot of far poorer decisions. But uh, back on topic, um... Uh, generally, uh, other other things are mostly you know the team Saber are going to be more involved. Um, I don't actually recall them having any dialogue in the Kilo Five in Glasslands. Um, they might have done, but I just don't recall. Again, um, particularly from Ash's perspective with his um mourning Holly and Dante, particularly Holly though. Um, and also handling. Halsey. Um, Let's say without she's not, discretion. She's not going to be treated as literally Hitler by I'm people. I mean, I, yeah, you're, you're, I mean <laughs> kidnapping <laughs> children and getting a bunch of them killed in the wilderness is kind of not great. Oh yeah, don't get me wrong. It was, it was fucked up. But yeah. like... A bit more than fucked up, I'd say. This isn't like... 
Uh oh, I ran over a dog. That's fucked up. This is. I like... think at least in regards to how she. And that's how Mendez. And that's how Mendez treats her. Given how Mendez was just as bad, if not worse, for his for participating in the Spartan Three program as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd That's say. That's what I mean. What Halsey did was terrible, but like Karen Travis goes out of her way to make it incredibly clear this is not some sort of like in-universe perception of these characters. Uh, toward Dr. Halsey. This is like a grudge that she has against the character. Yeah, because, um... But again, their focus isn't going to be on arguing with each other in the story like it is in Glasslands. Because, again, they've stopped, They've got an entire shield's worth, shield, shield world's worth of Forerunner murder bots still after them. Because Bigger now... priorities. Yeah, because now they're in the Forerunner's territory. Yeah. Um... You know, and they're still dealing with um, the Sentinels, and even, and we're also including Armagers in, or Promethean soldiers, as you know, they're more prominently known as. Um, so you kind of um, give them an, in sort of early introduction to to the timeline, so to speak. Yeah, in the core canon, they were introduced in twenty five fifty five on the Ark. Um, but yeah, we're introducing them a bit earlier because they are on the S.H.I.E.L.D. world in Legacy of Onyx. So it just makes sense to include them in this as well. Yeah. Um, cause because, because they are glorified Sentinels, um, they are literally Sentinels, yeah. um, it makes sense to include them, yeah. Um, there's also going to be, ch um, there's also, there's also going to focus on, uh, things such as trauma and, um, that, that sort of thing, following, um, obviously, Tom and Lucy have just had Kurt pretty much die in front of them. Yeah. Obviously not in front of them, but... And it's sort of them trying to push through that, along with all the other all the other shit that's been packed onto them over the course of the war, and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. <clears throat> that's going to be interesting to... See what all what all you have. Hmm. Um, following that, there is plans for a um, a rewrite of Last Light by Troy Denning. Mm -hmm. um, and no, correct me if I'm wrong. Last Light that that takes place on Gal, right? Yes, yeah. that, okay. that's takes place on Gal. Yes. Um. So we're so when you so when you say rewrite, what all are you going to be like doing with it? Because uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but again, I'm fell out with the reading of a lot of the, the extra Halo books, so I'm a little in the dark, especially with with that one. Like, it's a little oh, early to say. Okay, but, but um, so it's just like an idea then. Yeah. Okay. We do. We do. We do plan. Well, obviously, we, we plan to change it, but, um... Whether or not it entails a full rewrite is to be, is to be decided. To be decided, yeah. Um... Okay. It will introduce several original factions and characters of our own for the timeline, but, um, more on them later. A later date. Be introduced with a scattering of blossoms, per, per chance? Possibly. Yes. Bastard Blossom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Alright. Uh, anyone else have any other questions or do you want to touch on anything else with your regarding your project, Snobby? I'm open to any other questions that you might have. Okay, actually, I do have one I was kind of uh, holding. This is going to go back to Downfall. Um, you touched on it a little bit with how instead of Noble Six being the oh, the what was it hyper lethal vector yeah, or persona, yes. yes. Um, so would you kind of like could love them? Excuse me, cut that, Jacob. Um, no, could I you won't. go into that a little bit more? Like number one, what make what made you want to like make her a medic, and how that much more different is she going to be? 
in downfall compared to reach the medic aspect was actually not my idea it was gravy's idea uh, granted she's not actually here today but yeah. um that was her idea so I, I can't really be sure what was going through her head when she made that, but I assume she generally just thought that, you know, more Spartan medics was a good idea, I assume. I don't know. And female normal six, female normal sixes OCs tend to be better written than the male ones. The male ones tend to be extremely overpoweredly edgy. Oh, one note. Let's very one that. note. With a sword yarn by the blood. I think I've seen a couple of those, yeah. I think that, uh, my favorite parody of that was like, uh, well, I think it might have just been Edgy Spartan, not a double six one. Mm -hmm. It's like he was wearing all the generic, like, red and black armor with night covered in knives. And it says, Master Chief's my friend. Mm. I remember that. I remember you showing that to us. That was, that was hilarious. Yeah. Um, now, just now, before we get too far off topic, um, Nobby, if you could, what else do you kind of like have in store to differentiate uh, your Noble Six from canon, as it were? Well, firstly, she was going to be a bit of a chatterbox. Um, not so, not 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 as much as say, you know, like. Um, Book or she's still going to obviously be a Spartan, but she's gonna she's gonna talk a lot more. Um, how many lines of dialogue does Noble Six get in the base game? Like maybe twenty. Less than twenty, I'd say fifteen, give or take. And then half of them are like psychotic chuckle and exhausted asthmatic running. I don't really count them as dialogue lines, but yeah, fair enough. You know, she she doesn't six six in base game doesn't have many work doesn't have much dialogue in terms of words. Um, he's pretty quiet, but um, yeah, the six will uh, uh, our version of six will, will talk a lot. Um, in terms of her personality, she's gonna be. It occurs to me we've gone this far and we've never actually mentioned her name. Oh, Sarah. Yeah. And her name will be Sarah. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the differences we're making to her is her um, back, is her home world and backstory in that in this in this timeline she's orphaned by insurrectionists rather than covenant like um, Emil was and possibly Hazel but that's not really elaborated on. Um, her homeworld will be Veltun, the same as Spartan Mark G313 from the books. Um, she'll she'll be of uh, a Japanese ancestry, and um, and her armor is also going to be very different. That being a uh, white and red CQB armor set. So. So you can uh, see if you've seen my Twitter. I've done a couple of renders of her. We should do a poster of her at some point, but um, <laughs> I definitely will. Uh, uh, and if I recall right, she's uh, in the way the helmet lights are. They're kind of like koala bear ears, right? Or was that me? Koala bear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Especially, uh, especially when she's not damaged. Uh, she is going to make an appearance in the. Uh, she actually she made an appearance in the teaser trailer. Facing off the that elite in the trailer, field marshal. Yeah. The uh, well, because we're not really changing her fate. Well, she's still going to die on Reach. It's not really much of a spoiler. Um, it's Reach. Everybody dies. The list of people who survive is a hell of a lot shorter than the list of people who are dead. Yeah. True. There's at least a billion people who died on Reach, just on the human side alone. Um, but the but the way in which she dies is will be will be different, right? Because if I recall right, um, in the games games sorry, in the game the way Noble Six dies is at the basically having been hunted down over a period of several three weeks, days three days three days three days final stand and being overwhelmed by what were they ultras or Blades. 
um, a combination of um, generals, ultras, and a zealot who landed the final blow. Right, gotcha. And so, do you want to? You, how much of the her final fate in Downfall did you want to like go into? Then? Um, she still has that. She doesn't like fight constantly for three days, um, for three days straight. Mm -hmm. um, rather, she sort of plays cat and mice, mouse games with the Covenant, killing what she can, trying to find a different way off, but is eventually, you know, too exhausted, too, da too wounded, too damaged with her armor. And she sort of like, the, the, this field marshal, he makes a point of tracking her down. Um, so yeah, the field marshal is not going to die at the Mac cannon like he does in, um, like he doesn't core game. Right. Yeah. As I recall too, uh big change you wanna you're wanting to do with this and with your interpretation of the field marshal is he's he's there for the glory, but he's not necessarily one who's eager to fight at the front. Is that right? That's that would be the Ranger Commander. Mm -hmm. Um Sova, I forgot what I forgot. I forget his last name, but his first name is Sova. Um, he's one of the uh, Golden Ranger elites you can find across the game. Mm -hmm. Um, he's go he's going to be that sort of character. The field marshal is more than eager to fight in the front lines. It's just that his superiors, being the prophets and uh, you know the fleet masters and shit, keep ordering him elsewhere. Okay, I got you. So he's so he's willing to go out. So the field marshal is willing to go out of his way to just to disregard orders if it means killing the spawns. Is he gonna have like any particular uh, vendetta or a reason for wanting to constantly go after them? Or Sanki Sanki culture. He wants to he wants to kill it for the he wants to kill the spawns for the glory. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Because if he, if, he, if he was to kill a Spartan, then he would become, he would get like a, say it or the promotion or something along those lines. It's a lot of uh, honor and, I'm sorry, glory, treasure and shit like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Probably women too, if some healy culture needs to go by. More than likely, because even, even up to that point where they're... The Covenant are just trouncing co uh, Covenant. Covenant trouncing Covenant. Covenant are trouncing human forces left, right, and center. The demons that were the Spartans were just high, were as high value targets as uh, Covenant elite zealots were. So demons was, were, yeah. Yeah. Alright, uh, yeah, I... Anyone else got any other questions? I don't have any. Not really. Mm, not really, no. Alright. Uh, is there uh, anything else you want to tease what's uh, to come soon? <laughs> uh, you know, you'll probably be seeing more, uh, you'll probably be seeing more, like, tales from Slipspace soon, but, uh, that's for another time. Yeah. Okay. And then, do you want to talk about the? There is some concept art uh, I have made of a a character in white and gold armor. Should we mention him or save him for later? I think we. I think we'll save him for later. Okay. Um, it's bit, I think it's a bit. I think it's. I think it's a bit early to go into detail for him. But uh, you know, there'll be another time. Uh, Alpha, do you want to go into the next about uh, what Reforge is? Since we mentioned it, we haven't really done a breakdown of it. Sure, yeah. So basically, Reforged is it was well, that, that, excuse me. Reforged is essentially going to be uh, was our kickoff point to start off start off the Fracture Glass timeline, where it's a rewrite of Halo 4, which for a lot of people was where they got back, not only got into, but got back into the Halo universe as a whole, and with a couple key differences. Uh, number one, Blue Team 
joins the <clears throat> excuse me joins the crew roster of the UNSC Infinity. And number two, uh, there is excuse me, Chief and Kelly have a much more involved romance throughout. And and it's also one thing I one thing that we've kind of talked about with a couple other people is it's throughout the story it's uh, not so much going to be showing off that he's an ultra powered badass which he kind of is depending on how you play the games but Sprinkle throughout is he's not even though he wants to constantly go it alone he can't and that's something I kind of hope kind of gets uh shown throughout throughout the tale especially with his it's the point you'd like to make yeah huh it's the point you'd like to make yeah exactly um i don't really have much else to really say on it uh anyone have any questions on it before i just start rambling <laughs> um well not so much a question more of a uh well i suppose this is a, this is a question um at one point it was done wasn't it but then we decided that there was going to be a bunch of things that needed to be changed yeah at one point it was done like i said it was it was to be the original jumping in point for the fracture glass timeline and so there was a bit of there was a lot of what do you call it uh Free rain, uh, creative liberties taken that now that we have a more coherent idea of where we want the journey to go for the fractureless timeline there has there it doesn't unfortunately does sadly necessitate a fair amount of rewrite um not so much in like how it overarches but just fixing a couple of dialogue things here or there taking out a few swear words <laughs> um and also <laughs> Uh, and also cutting down on uh, a few of what I'm going ahead and calling scene repeats. Uh, I do, unfortunately, when I was writing it, I believe I kind of got just hung up on writing this overarching like romance thing between Sean and Kelly, which I did like. But I admit I kind of retread quite a few scenes where they just kept saying I love you over and over. Uh, to the point where it got kind of annoying. Writing romance is really fucking hard, as it turns it out. Especially is. for uh, lonely motherfuckers such as myself. <laughs> I'm sorry if we're trying to keep the swearing to a minimum. You'll just have to bleep out everything I say. Thank you. <laughs> um, fine. And, Alpha, I can't blame you for having that problem, because even if I've gotten better romance, I still suck at it. And really... One thing that I feel like is not talked about a lot is that it's very subjective, all things considered. It is, yeah, but... Um... I can think of an entire demographic of people on, on in this country alone who will swear up and down that Fifty Shades of Grey is a romance novel. If that is not an indicator that there are inherent disagreements about the ideas behind romance. Yeah. I'm not quite sure what is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, and also just, again, um, retooling a lot of scenes. Thankfully, now that we've got uh, Crimson Quill, who's been on the last... He was here on the last two, right? Or is it just one? He was just on the last one. Oh, he was on the last one, sorry. Um, thanks to Quill being a little more available, we've actually been able to get more headway in the rewrites. Um, just again, it's retooling some dialogue, adding in a uh, retooling dialogue, fixing a couple scenes here or there, and then also as we get further on, tweaking how a few, how some characters, some original characters, I should say, are introduced. Uh, specific, specifically, excuse me, right off the bat is going to be the first scene where we see um, Commander Rachel Sabine, a OC created by a friend of our, another member of the project, Wes, who sadly is not here. <laughs> Hopefully Excuse we can me. get him on one project to talk, uh, on one podcast to talk about his character. Yeah, um, Rachel, 
uh, Rachel's been, with the, sorry, with the exception of Ethan, Samantha, and a couple of the other Ashfall characters, as well as to a lesser extent of Captain Hansen, my OC, Rachel's probably one of the older OCs to be attached to the project. And one thing I need to, I want to redo is not only how she's introduced, but start up, but uh, retool some, I believe, what was it, the, a hint of a romance that was potentially brewing that we uh, kind of kept kind of going back and forth on. Yeah. Yeah. Should we mention what the romance was or just keep it? <laughs> <laughs> You know what? I'll keep that hidden for now because that chapter is a little bit of, is a little bit of ways. So we'll keep we'll keep that under wraps. Just put that back in the closet, so to speak. Yeah. Was that too on the nose? That's nah, fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's gay. It's really gay. <laughs> oh. You heard it here first, folks. It's gay. I don't even know which one they're talking about. I just heard the closet joke, and that's all I know now. <laughs> You'll find out later. This is. Oh, I'm sure I should. I'm sure I will. Um. And yeah. Also, just fun thing because I've now known Harrington a long a long time. A part of the rewrite is that the saber that they fly towards the end is going to look suspiciously like an F-14 Tomcat. No, it can't be a saber then. It could be a saber tooth. I made a whole UNSC Tomcat you can use. I yeah, know I'm. I wasn't going that deep into that deep into detail just yet. That, because that's even further than Sabine's intro. Oh, fair enough. We'll talk plain lore later, for sure. Yeah, yeah. We we'll do a special podcast maybe in the future, just Harrington discussing about the lore of real world planes. And just like that, views have dropped. No, we don't. Yes. You right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. I'm great, actually. How are you? Oh, that that kind of scares me. Not gonna lie. A little yeah. scary. <laughs> I like planes. I like planes. That's an un Wait, understatement of the century. I was I was just expecting a plane to crash my house. I'm sure you'll appreciate my 30-minute documentary on the P-82 twin Mustang. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> is, is, is each plane segment going to be 30 minutes long? I'm not sure. We'll see. We'll see. We can always figure that out later. Yeah, the bot can record up to six hours for one single podcast. Oh, dear lord, no! That's EFAP territory! <laughs> EFAP, every frame of pause? We've been over this. Yeah, I've, uh, I've lost a lot of else. interest in EFAP over this whole controversy much, thing. Much as I uh, hate to derail our you know, sort of vaguely plane-based conversation, we are on supposedly the topic of uh, Nobby's projects and more loosely Alpha's projects as well. Yeah. Yeah. And how long have we been recording? About an hour now, right? Uh, yeah, 43 minutes. minutes. Shoot. Um, that reminds a me, late, I am uh, going to have to get going now. Okay. Oh. Right. See you on, I'll see you later, Nomad. Yep, later. sorry to fail early. Have a good night. Yep, thanks. Have a good one, guys. Later, Nomad. Later. Later. God, I hate that guy. <laughs> I'm just joking, <laughs> of course. He's fine. He's fine. But I'm gonna keep that to the recording. Are you gonna clip that and send it to him? <laughs> no, <laughs> Jacob. You have, uh, assume, not only do you keep that in, when he says it, there has to be the sound of a Coke bottle hitting the door like he's just left. Oh, I, 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 uh, you know what? After, I feel like after you saying that, we could play the, that one. <laughs> horrible dub scene again from Transformers. Oh god. <laughs> First of all, one. Please make that a recurring theme. I yeah. just need that to be like something that happens at some point. Yeah. I, I'm gonna put it in random. I don't know if I'm gonna do it this episode, but I'm gonna put it in randomly. Some sort of scene to play. Oh shit.
<laughs> nice. I'm just thinking, maybe I should put the scene of Starscream doing the hip dance from Transformers Prime. Do that. But, but uh, considering it's on the heels of the plane discussion, it's only fitting that it's a plane that does it. Oh no, I'll just have him do a loop dance on loop while Harrington's talking about planes. Sure. Yeah, there you absolutely. Go. I'm down. Yeah. All right. Uh, anything else we need to talk about the projects? About... I could briefly mention my project, sure. if you guys would like. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Um, so I was talking shenanigans with some of these gentlemen here. Um, and they and they introduced me to the two, like, I was already familiar with the two characters, Owen and Hazel. Uh, both Spartans. Mm, terribly sorry. A little late for me. Um, they're both Spartans. Uh, they both made appearances at Outpost Discovery. And, uh, what was the Linda comic they showed up in toward the very, very end? Very minor role they played. Lone but... Wolf. Lone Wolf, yeah. Yes, um, the milk comic. Can you not? Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, you know, fucking, I can't help but notice that, no, alright, brief detour. He, Nobby's fucking talking about his projects. Very calm, very respectful. Alf was talking about his projects. Little memes, but for the most part, you know, keeping it civil. And then I start talking about pro projects. Oh, yeah, it's the Milk comic. It's a MILF. Oh, MILF, yeah, no. It's a right. Linda the Linda MILF, MILF comic. Yeah, and you yeah, mentioned the, uh, the Lone Wolf. Yeah, that's where all of her memes come from, about the, the MILF thing. Yeah, yeah. Indeed. All right, but back on the fucking topic, I wanted to write a little story about Owen and Hazel, and I wanted to write the story about the Blooding Years, uh, which is the <sighs> the St. Healy Civil War in the post uh, post Covenant War, where it was essentially the Arbiter's faction versus everybody else, and everybody else was also fighting everybody else. Um, and I felt like there's a couple of minor differences with the Blooding Years uh, that I felt like I could explore a little bit. Like, um, one of the things that gets changed, I can't remember if this is Gla uh, Glasslands, Thursday War, or whatever one, that it's established that Oni is supplying the servants of the abiding truth to fight the arbiter which is like so bone crushingly fucking stupid i don't really see oni doing that like that's really out of character for them um and some of the other gentlemen here agree and so we're changing things um the servants of the abiding truth get their weapons from another source we'll discuss that in later detail, but I can assure you immediately it makes a hell of a lot more sense than Oni. Um, and Oni is directly supporting these sorts of saying Helios. And that's sort of where Owen and Hazel come in. And the whole... Uh, and they're on a mission to knock out one particular asshole uh, fighting with the servants of the abiding truth. And my whole idea of it is I wanted to open up the show a little window into this war that's very often forgotten in the Halo circles, but still very important. Um, and I also wanted to explore Owen and Hazel a little bit more. Owen is a little bit more character because he's in the, the young adult novel. Does anybody remember Battle the Born. names of those? Battleborn Battle Born. and Meridian Divide. They're, they're pretty good. And Meridian Divide. I heard they were good as well, but I haven't read them. Um, but I have gotten some feedback from some of the gentlemen here about what Owen is like, so I can try to portray him correctly. Um, Hazel, meanwhile, unfortunately, she doesn't seem to have ever gotten that sort of treatment. I can't think of any story she was in other than Lone Wolf, and even then, I'm not sure she even has any dialogue. She's in. She's in. She's in one page. One panel, rather. And she doesn't say anything, yeah. Yeah, it's unfortunate, you know? I felt like I could maybe give her 
that's a person she could be. Yeah. Um, now you can make a very reasonable argument. At that point, she's just an OC. Well, yeah, but it, at the current stage, she's a name and a suit of armor. Now, I'm sure that's not going to be the case for anybody who went to Outpost Discovery, in which case, you lucky bastards. Um, but, like, I mean, I didn't. I didn't get to go to Outpost Discovery, so these guys are new to me. Yeah. I wish that was still going. I hate that they stopped doing it. Uh, in all fairness, show. there was a big cough around 2020 that kind of got in the way of things. Just and we're still little... kind of uh, just, I wish limping they past back. that. Oh, yeah. I'm sure one day it'll have to come back. It was way too successful. They built all these nice, like, models and miniatures and exhibits. It'd be such a waste to just never do it again. Yeah. It was like, successful. Oh, that, 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 uh, was it an Arbor or was it just an Elite model that they made? It was an Elite Ultra. Halo 2 Anniversary version. Fucking oh, I'm a nerd. Um, but yeah. <laughs> well, we love you, buddy. Nobby, you shouldn't feel bad about that. I mean, I don't. What do we got in here? A We're gentleman who likes John X. Kelly a little too much to the point where he decided to do a collaborative writing project. A gentleman who also likes John and Kelly a little too much and decided to rewrite all of Halo 4 for it. A gentleman who likes Halo so much he wrote a million fucking words of fan fiction, crossing it over with another franchise he now hates. Uh, <laughs> that's me, by the way. I did that. I wrote them in for Monix. It's mediocre at best. Um, and then Nobby. Well, you're a nerd, but you're in good company. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but as a closing remarks for this Owen and Hazel story, uh, I've got, like, it's basically done. It's drafted. It's going through its edits and revisions now. But it does have one major issue. No yeah. fucking title. I just cannot... Yeah. For the life of me, think up a title for this. Should we do a poll or some sort of voting? No, idea? do not let the community decide on titles. They always choose the no. worst fucking ones. Uh, yes, yeah, so let's go with. Uh, uh, you, you know what? If you decide you want to do a poll, I'm doing the executive decision, and we're calling it Cthulhu All Spark. Cthulhu <laughs> <laughs> All Spark. Because that fractured glass transformers All Spark. Cthulhu well, I mean, edition. that's like a bit of background here. Um, internet historian, a YouTuber, did a video a little while ago, quite a while ago actually, I'm old as shit, damn, um, about online polls and how easily memeable they are. Stuff like sending Pitbull to a lat- or was it Pitbull, I think? They sent him up to Kodak Kodiak, Alaska yeah. in, uh, me in memory of some of his more uh, questionable lyrics. Uh, sent- was it- Taylor Swift or Katy Perry? One of the two of them, they tried to send her to a school for the deaf for a singing performance. It was Taylor Swift. <laughs> that was, yep, nope, that was Taylor Swift. You're right. Um, again, with Taylor Swift, um, they tried to uh, have her meet a fan and they picked a, um, what is it, a gentleman in his 20s. So clearly not the right demographic they were aiming for with little girls. Um, and may I add, some news outlets were unreasonably cruel to that poor gentleman. Um, oh, off topic, though. Expecting. Long story short, online polls tend to go that way, and one yeah. of them was this one couple that decided they would let the internet name their baby. Oh, the dear, name uh... they decided on was Cthulhu, all spark. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what the kid ends up being called? Uh, I'm gonna assume no, but the, I suppose there is a non-zero chance they decided to go with it. Yeah, they, God, it was, uh... Dude, I would love to be called Cthulhu Allspark. Well, yeah, if Yo. you're a dude, but that is a little... A little <laughs> yeah, I, I hope it was. I, I really hope it, it reminds me... It reminds me of what this time <laughs> that came back in, like, um... Oh, it was, it was a long time ago. Um, but basically, some dumb parents, they, they love, they come, you know, Final Fantasy is a very lovable franchise, you can love oh, it. Um, yeah. so these parents, they, they love, they love Final Fantasy 7 a little bit too much, so mm -hmm. they named their kids Sephiroth. <laughs> um, well, as it happens, um, I guess this sort of, um, controversy 
inspired other parents to do this because there are now multiple kids across the United States called Sephiroth, apparently. That's fucking great. I'm looking this up. I know there's at least one kid named Dovahkiin, and his fa and his entire family, him included, are entitled to free Bethesda games for life. God damn. Honestly, that's based, but. To be fair, horrible. if I could get the name Dragonborn, like that's pretty good, right? Yeah. That's also, pretty good. One girl named Khaleesi, and ooh, I'm sure their parents regret that now. Oh, probably. Uh, how many <laughs> Daenerys's do you think there are out there? At least uh, one. There's a lot, a actually. Lot. I remember there's quite a lot. Because I remember all of their parents were not very happy when Season 8 of Game of Thrones came out. Can't imagine why. Um... Alright, back on, back on topic. This is derailed horribly. I do this very naturally. I keep derail things. I'm doing it now. Even. It's kind of fun, though, though. It is fun. Um, but not great for supposedly topic-focused podcasts. Yeah, it, it helps uh, to uh, add some variety and entertainment to the, the listeners so they don't well, get... sure, yeah. I suppose that's true. So, that's my current Fractured Glass timeline project. It's a short story compared to what Nobby and Alpha are looking at, working on. Slash have already worked on. Yeah, um, exactly. Also, actually, why not uh, just to uh, kind of throw it out there because it, this is, is a blah, blah, assassination of a high-ranking enemy unit, why not call it Operation Valkyrie? Um, well... So we take them. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. Right, it is taken. The that was the name of the plot to assassinate Adolf Hitler during World War Two. Well, that's the that, that's what it'd be referencing. But at the same yeah. time, this guy ain't Hitler. That's true. True. Um, he's a right bastard, and he's somebody that Oni and the Swords of Sang Helios want dead. But he's not Hitler. True. Say what true. you like about Hitler. I certainly do. Uh, the man was certainly high profile. I'd say okay. Mm. Do I think we should think on. I think we should think on Operation. I think we should. I think we should name it the Operation, though. That's a good thing. Like good thought. I reckon we'll figure yeah. something out. I'm sure. I kind like, of, um, like a short story like this, where it's centered around. It. I feel like it should be like. Its sto its title should be whatever Operation Handle is given to it. Indeed. Correct. Yeah. What about it, Jacob? Is there anything else we'd like to discuss? We could uh, just uh, just talk about random stuff now, since we've basically talked about the current projects we're working on and stuff. All right. We can break down some of the characters that were like OCs that appeared in projects already. Um, the only one I really have to contribute is Lieutenant Thomas Oswald. He's from the Men from Onyx. I I borrow a lot of things from the Men from Onyx. Um, he's a Lieutenant with the Office of Naval Intelligence, uh, formerly Section 2, which is like the Propaganda Division, um, which is how in The Men From Onyx he gets unwillingly shanghaied into being the UNSC's public relations manager. Uh, and, but in, but in Fractured Glass Timeline, obviously none of that happens, so he's still with Oni, and he's doing Section 3 Oni stuff. Managing missions, make, gathering intelligence, weapons development, that kind of thing. Good stuff. Yeah. <sighs> I'm afraid I'll have to return very shortly if you'd like to continue on without me for a time. Give me just a sec. Okay. Um, so, that's Harrington. Navi, you got an OC you want to kind of delve into a little? We've got, I've got two, um, two Spartan fours. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you uh, called Benjamin Lee and Anna Shinra. Ah, yes. Both, both of them are Section Zero. That being internal affairs. The uh, uh, that Section Zero is like Oni's internal affairs department. So, as Spartans assigned to Section Zero, they handle internal affairs in. Uh, you know, with guns and knives and snipers and shit. Um, 
basically they keep th they keep uh, pe they keep things in Oni running smoothly. Um, or they help to do that. Yeah. By killing people. Murdering them, even. Yes. Um. You know, we've got a sort of uh, you know, sort of childhood friends thing going. You know, joined the military together, grew up together, all that shit. Um, and is uh, sorry, real quick, is as I recall, they're born on Earth as well, right? Born on Earth. Be Benjamin was born in uh, Taipei, type, type mm -hmm. with Aunt Anna was born in Beijing. Um. So yeah, Taiwanese and Chinese, respectively. Gotcha. Um. <clears throat> but yeah, um, they'll probably have stories of their own, short stories. Um, so yeah. Cool. Um, I have only one I'm really working on right now. Well, technically three, but only two are really fleshed out. Um, I call them the crew. I'm pretty sure I've already... I've to listeners who have already have already talked about them, I apologize, but they're the only ones I have right now. Uh, the crew of the Pelican co call sign Purple Rider, uh, mm. Captain Paul Young Hansen, his crew chief Valerie Val Jones, and their weapons systems officer Charlie Dokes. Um, not much should we say about them. Hansen was bo uh, Hansen is a spacer kid born on an in between colony, which is a colony that's like right between the inner and the outer colonies. Um, so he's never really had m permanent roots ever set down, just kind of bounced around until he finally enlisted when he was 17. Uh, 17 or 18, I forget right off the top of my head. Val was born on Earth and is something of a rich girl who wanted to follow in the footsteps of her uncle who had served in the UNSC Marine Corps. And there is technically a fourth of their group who is actually uh, was going to be was part of Val and Hansen's crew, only to die shortly thereafter. They got to like actually having a sort of working together as a as a unit, and replaced by Charlie, who's going to be relatively younger than Hansen and Val. But uh, younger than Val and Hansen, I should say. Sorry. And Charlie is going to be the sort of rebel of the group. He does not really give a crap about the UEG or the UNSC for that matter. In fact, he kind of hates them because he was originally just going to have a quiet, well, not terribly long quiet life with his high school sweetheart in a mining colony because, well, most of the outer colonies are wiped out after a certain point. And yeah, he just kind of, he's going to be a bit of a, a thorn in their size just because, again, doesn't like the UNSC, doesn't like the UEG, and is just there to serve because they told him to. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, got no seat? Uh, well, there is. I, do, can we talk about Ethan now, or since that we got to his introduction? Yeah, let's go ahead and talk about Ethan. Uh, well. I I did have help with Alpha, re like redoing his character entirely, uh for at least for Forge because originally uh he wasn't um like my older draft when I because I had this uh it, Ethan's not fully my character I had help from a friend making him uh if he's listening to this podcast he'll he will definitely know that. Originally, Ethan was made. Oh, Ashfall as a project used to be called War Games, and he was originally supposed to be a machinima made in Halo Five. But then I kind of just like, oh, uh, machinimas uh, wouldn't work for this type of story at all. For the stuff I wanted to do, uh, basically, I'm it would have to back. be uh, watered down to be the story I wanted to be. Especially for the stuff I want to show up because, like, oh, I couldn't have Prometheans in the story because, uh, can't have Prometheans in Halo 5 with, uh, no theater and campaign. Yeah. Other than, uh, Warzone, which would make filming scenes be horrible. 
Uh, but so I decided to change it to a comic. Currently, uh, I'm uh, we're going to be doing a novelization first and then a comic later for the story. Yeah, and uh, also just as a side note, I've had a lot of fun writing for Ethan throughout Reforged, so thank you again for letting me uh, toy with him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I I I really like seeing that him very much more fleshed out than his original just uh, Oni that bad guy. But uh, I hope uh, people end up uh, really liking his character because I also tried to make him like at least people. Uh, I want him to be a character that you like to hate, but then you grow to like. Like oh I I like this dude. I don't want this stuff to happen. Yeah. So, I think at least um, considering that, as we uh, as we excuse me as I went writing through Reforge, you know, you had definitely had a hand in making sure that how he was written was how you wanted to be portrayed. So, at the very least, I think people are gonna consider are gonna like him as that badass who, again, like you said, you start out kinding to want to just tell him to fuck off, get the hell out of here. Stop trying to fuck shit up. To, huh? That guy's actually kind of cool. Um, doesn't <laughs> spoil anything, but there is a bit more of a depth behind the eight foot tall, right? Behind the uh, eight foot tall Aussie sporting two. Hello. Hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not quite sure what was being talked about. So we were just uh, discussing a little bit of Ethan Jacobs' o OC. I see. Um, anyone else got anything they want to add on, discuss, or... Nada? Nope. Not really? Not really, yeah. Uh, should we just talk about off-topic things about the community that has happened recently? There's not really anything has happened since like the big uh, layoff yeah. or anything. Yeah, I don't no, not a whole lot's really happened. Mostly this still community infighting, which, which uh, is, is the worst. It, it, it shouldn't happen at this point. We need to be together and like try to, as a community, try to help through three as much as we can. Yeah. Especially in these times. We can't just like say like, give Halo like the bungee. Wah. Uh because like that's not going to help anything because like I... one, uh, Bungie can't have Halo back if it wanted to because one it's owned by S Sony now so yeah. uh, they're not going to be touching a Xbox product within a 3 billion mile long pole but uh yeah I think what people need to understand is that Bungie are never coming back to Halo yeah like they they're telling the story they want to do it's like they want to work on projects they want to do they're working on destiny even though it's kind of like a a project that not it's like it's not a game for everyone which uh we can do a different episode on destiny because i know not we just want to hear about destiny but uh, um I, I think to at least kind of just build off a little of what nobby's saying with is it's better this way because 343 for all their faults i'll at least give them that they've got a story or in this case stories with how often they flip-flop um that they it seems like generally want to tell um especially if it involves trying to convey the human the humanity around the master chief and i think it's better for a company even if it's entirely different to work on a story or even a character if to keep it going then have a company who's already done doesn't want to do any more uh who would be just apathetic to it because we there have been a i'm struggling to recall other examples unfortunately where we have where you have creators who were told oh gotta work on this again um basically saying it's better because if you have uh, people like that, you're going to have an inferior product. And it's better, an inferior product, inferior story, and it's better um, that you have someone, at the very least, fresh working it through. And that's at least what uh, 343 seems to try to be bringing to the table. 
have. So yeah, um, that's all I really got is like just get the 343 hasn't really been able to do much, but at the very least we should try to support them with being very, you know, give them feedback calmly. Feedback. Yeah, don't be don't be toxic. You all you guys know who you are. And it, again, if you're gonna call it out, call it out respectfully. Not say like, oh, you're the worst company ever. You're yeah. as bad as e EA or Activision. It's like, yeah. If you're gonna, just again, if you're going to push back on stuff that they are doing, do it respectfully. Don't go off whinging. Uh, back it up with facts or something that gives more concrete to your argument. And for the love of up. God, don't send death threats. Yes, yeah, dear you God, don't. Threat, uh, just uh, stop, get off the podcast right now. We don't want you in this fan project yeah. community that we're building. Yeah. If I might offer one final bit of advice. Sure. If you're like me, and you couldn't give less of a shit about what 343 makes anymore, the best thing you can do is nothing. Say nothing. Barely listen, if at all. You have other things you can be paying attention to. Yeah. Work, um, put your attention towards an outlet that you want to see grow. Let not the negativity destroy, but let your positivity create. That makes Look, sense? I mean, I get it. I feel like it's... Occasionally I do get it, you know? Where it feels like it's not just that Halo's been handled badly. It's that it's an insult. It's like a personal insult. And it's it's very illogical, but I feel it sometimes. I get it. But it's not fucking worth it, alright? It's just yeah. not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very uh, poignant way to put it. Thank you, Harrington. All right. Um, should we start? What? Anything else we want to mention or talk about, or should we start wrapping it up now? I think I wrap, it up. wrap it up. No, let's wrap it up. I think there's nothing else to say. Me... Yeah. And uh, well, uh, this is the end for episode three of the Fractured Glass podcast. And I hope you join us for the fourth episode. Hopefully, I won't have a shitty mic today. Hopefully. But... And hopefully, I don't have a dog trying to break down my door. This is Alpha Spartan signing out. P117 signing out. Hi, I'm, 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 I'm Harrington. Goodbye. All right, now, Nobby. Going, Doc. All right. See you guys later.